Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Jenna Flanagan. Once again, it's tick season and it's a deadly one. Five new tick species were recently found in New Jersey and the East Asian species is carrying a deadly virus. It's called SFTS, which stands for severe fever with thrombocytopenia syndrome. The tick has recently been discovered infesting sheep in Hunterdon County. Add that chilling fact to a new report by the Center for Disease Control that says insects bites have hit New York harder than almost any other state. We have a major cause for concern. Between 2004 and 2016, there were over 69,000 tick-borne related illnesses across the state, 82% of which were Lyme disease. So joining me with insight on this chilling fact is Rick Osfeld, disease ecologist at the Cary Institute of Ecosystem Studies and a senior scientist on the Tick Project, a five-year effort to target and kill ticks in a large area, hopefully limiting Lyme. Rick, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Jenna. So, of course, I'm hoping our viewers remember you from when we were out, actually, at the Cary Institute talking about ticks. But tell me about this new tick study that you're working on. Well, the Tick Project is an effort to finally try to do something about the source of all these tick-borne diseases. And by doing something about it, we mean to so aggressively control tick populations mm -hmm. in a safe way for our families and for the environment that we actually reduce the number of cases of tick-borne disease. That's never been done before, and we're trying to do it right now in, up in Dutchess County in the Hudson Valley. So what are we talking about when you say the source? Because when I was with you, we were looking at field mice, I believe. But then a lot of people have pointed the finger to, deer to the deer population, to other things. What do you see as the source? Well, so there are lots of sources. So that's why it's such a complex system. So the ticks spend a lot of their time not on a host, on the forest floor, in the leaf litter, doing pretty much nothing. And during that time, they're a target. And one of our interventions is spraying a naturally occurring native fungus that happens to make its living killing ticks as you would spray a chemical insecticide, but it's not a chemical. Mm -hmm. um, the other means is by treating mice and chipmunks uh, which are the host of the baby ticks and the source of infection with all these tick-borne pathogens. And they are lured into a little box that delivers a tiny drop of a tick-killing substance. And so you're, it, they've been referred to as little mouse car washes. The mice go in full of ticks and they come out with those ticks dying. And those are the ticks that we most want to kill because they're the dangerous ones. How many of these do you have to have? Because there's mice and chipmunks and everything all over the place. There are indeed. And so that's one of the reasons why trying to kill the mice or the chipmunks, control them, is um, not likely to be effective as well as ethically uh, a bit of a problem. But if you we're trying to do this in neighborhoods where people live, where people are getting sick at mm -hmm. very high rates. So if you have about five of these little devices in someone's yard, that's enough. And is this something that people can actually go to the Cary Institute and get for themselves? Or how do you get a hold of these devices? Well, we are now researching whether they're effective. So I'm not yet recommending that they okay. go get them. Um, but we're doing the gold standard of a double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized study, the mm -hmm. same way that we would study a new pharmaceutical product, to see whether this combination of the fungus spray mm -hmm. and these little boxes that lure in the rodents and kill the ticks on them actually reduce our cases of tick-borne disease. At that point, then, then they would be, we would be able to say, yes, you should go out and get these things. Municipalities, neighborhoods, homeowners can then adopt what we have tested and found to be successful, if indeed we do. All right, and, and that's why I wanted to stay so long on that subject, simply because if there's something that we can do, we all want to know what that is. Uh, but I do want to turn a little bit to these new ticks that have been popping up, these new diseases. Are there super ticks out there? I've seen that headline a couple of times. What's changing? Well, I don't know about super ticks. Um, most of these ticks are native North American species of tick, but they're on the move. So they're moving uh, to new geographic areas. And in many cases, most of these cases, they're moving up from the south. Uh, so there are ticks that formerly occupied the southeastern or south central U.S., that are expanding their geographic range for reasons that we don't entirely understand. Climate warming is a part of it, but there are other factors at play as well. Then you get the occasional appearance of, a, of an exotic tick, like this longhorned tick that came over from Asia and was discovered in New Jersey last year. And it's been recently determined that they survived the winter um, 
just fine. The, the sort of New Jersey winter was not cold enough to kill them off. Whether they're here to stay, whether they're going to expand is something that we don't know. But we need to be monitoring these ticks much more carefully than we currently are to figure out what are the neighborhoods, what are the populations that will soon be at risk or already are at risk and don't even know it. A lot of places where people have been getting sick are in more rural wooded areas. Is this something that people who are in urban areas like New York City need to be vigilant and concerned about as well? Um, it's a particularly a problem in fragmented suburbanized landscapes. So the mm -hmm. pristine forest has ticks, but they're lower in abundance. Um, so. But there are tick populations and the hosts, like the white-footed mice and chipmunks, that are moving into more urban areas, including the outskirts of New York City. All right. Well, listen, doctor, thank you so much for joining us on the program and for at least giving us some of the information that we need. I'm sorry it's not better news. <laughs> One day we'll have you back with some good news, but I hope thank so. you. Thank you very much.